today's video is all about getting the most out of your stamps. And today I'm going to be using this um, festive foliage set of stamps from Gina K Designs. You don't need to have this set of stamps to do the techniques that I'm doing today, but I'm just trying to show how you can take one stamp, or in, in this case, a set of stamps, and I'm, I'm going to be using sort of two or three of the individual stamps from this set, and create totally different looks by using them in different ways. We're going to be creating a watercolour effect, a nice striking um, embossed design over a masked background, spotlight colour effect and a shaker card. All just using the same couple of stamps and to create four totally different looks. So I'm going to move these out of the way and we'll get right on with the first technique. So the first technique that we're going to be doing today um, will give like a watercolour effect using Distress Inks. And I've chosen Twisted Citron, Peeled Paint, Pine Needles and Vintage Photo. Basically three shades of green, a light, a medium and a dark and a brown because we're going to be using this pine cone and fir branch um, stamp. We're going to be doing this onto a piece of craft card and this is some uh, Nina Desert Storm craft. I quite like this because it's got a smooth finish to it. But any craft card or a, a neutral brown shade would be really good. I'm going to be using my stamping platform. I'm just popping a piece of paper in there just to protect the foam um, from any ink that might sort of spill out over the edges. Like a piece of craft card has been cut to six by four inches, but you know, choose whatever size suits you, whatever size or shape card blank that you're going to be creating. So just deciding where I want to place this in the first instance. And I think I'm going to have it about there. Now I've got some little foam applicators and these are actually little mini ones, slightly smaller than the standard size. And um, they're by a company called Crafts 2 here in the UK. But you can use, you know, your standard foam applicator or some blending brushes. I know the blending brushes are available in a range of sizes. And this is just what makes it a little easier to apply different colours to the stamp. So I'm going to be applying the vintage photo to the pine cone. and the actual branch part of the stamp there. And then I'm going to be adding all the different shades of green to the actual pine needles. So I'm going to start with the lightest colour and just randomly apply some of the, the colour on there. Take some of the medium shade. And then finally, some of the darker. I want to give it a very light mist of water. Not too much. If you think that you might get some uh, dripping off the actual stamp platform. You could always mop up some of the excess water. But as long as you're careful, you should be all right. And then press that down. And as you can see, it creates this lovely watercolor effect. Now I want to add some more detail with some of the other stamps um, with the pine needles on. So I'm just going to remove that from my stamp platform. Take a 
take one of the other stamps and decide where I want to place this one. And I think I'm going to have that there. And again, working in exactly the same way that we did last time, I'm just going to use the blending tool to apply colour. As you can see that creates a really nice soft watercolour effect. So I can quickly go and make that up into a finished card and show you what that looks like. So there we go, we've inked around the edge, just matted onto a little red card, popped that up on some 3D foam on another mat of the craft card and just stamped a sentiment and cut that into a banner shape. Really quick and simple, um, nice rustic feel card there. So for our next card, we're going to mask off an area and I, I've already done that here. I've masked off this rectangle with some painter's tape and I'm going to blend some distress ink in there to create a colour block area in the background. And we're then going to stamp and emboss um, our design over the top to create a different effect to the previous card. So just taking a foam blending tool, or again, if you've got blending brushes, whatever you happen to have, I'm using cracked pistachio and peacock feathers here. So carefully removing the masking tape. And we just want to make sure this is dry before we go to stamp and emboss because otherwise our embossing powder is going to stick to the distress ink. So you can either set this aside to dry or I'm just going to give it a bit of a blast with my heat tool. And as soon as it's dry, I'm going to come back and we'll stamp the design on the front. Now my background is dry. I've just dusted over with my anti-static bag. I'm going to be stamping with my WOW embossing clear ink pad and heat embossing with some gold embossing powder. So pressing down firmly all over. take that out of there, get my scrap of paper again and this is the metallic gold rich super fine from WOW if there are any stray little bits just use a brush to flick those off. I'm 
and I'll heat that with my heat tool. And I might just add a few more with the smaller spray. So let's just move this embossing powder out of the way. And swap our stamp. For the smaller one. Hard to decide really which to go for. In fact, I might actually go for that spray. but just not ink up the stem on that one. And I really like that. So I'll clear this away, pop a sentiment on and show you the finished card there. And here's our second card finish. I did originally have this on the actual front of the card blank, but I decided I wanted a bit of a border. So I trimmed it down, matted it onto some black card, popped it onto another card blank, just added an embossed sentiment and really classy and elegant design, totally different to the first one that we did on the craft card. So let's move this out of the way and get on to our third idea. Okay, so next up we're going to do a spotlight technique. So we're going to be stamping in black in the background and then we're going to be adding a coloured overlay to highlight a certain area of the stamp design. So once again, just going to pop my piece of paper into my stamp platform just to, so I don't get ink all over the foam. I've cut a piece of cardstock just slightly smaller than 7x5 because I'm going to be putting this on a 7x5 card blank. And just going to decide where I want this. And to begin with, I'm going to be stamping in black because this is my base layer. So I think I'm going to have this somewhere there. I'm going to be using this um, Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink. It's really good for detail in the way that Versafine is. Um, but on top of that, you can also, if it's an outline um, design, you can colour with alcohol markers as well as water-based um, media as well so it's a really good all-rounder might take a closer look at this ink pad in another video Just going to wipe this off.
So pretty happy with that as my background layer there, I think. And what I want to do is focus on this area for my spotlight. So once again, I'll go and get this cleaned off. And we'll use this large stamp. So I have another piece of cardstock here. Gonna layer that in position there. And for this, I'm going to use Distress Oxide Ink, Vintage Photo and Evergreen Bow. I'm going to use the little foam applicators that we used in the first card to apply colour to the stamp. I'm not going to spritz it with water this time as we want a cleaner image. I'm just going to go over the brown again. Quite happy with how the greens turned out there. That's better. So that's our coloured foliage. I'm just going to let that dry. I'll go and clean my stamp off and then we'll die cut a circular area using um, a nesting die ready to overlay onto our background. So I've die cut my circle. I've die cut a slightly larger circle from black card. I'm going to map that onto there. And then I'm going to layer this onto the background, lining up the design and finish with a sentiment. And I'll be back as soon as I've done that. And here's our third card. So just matted our stamped piece onto a card blank with some 3D foam popped up that spotlight on some 3D foam as well and then just die cut a little banner with the sentiment kept that nice and simple you want the focus to be this coloured spotlight area and again totally different to the previous two cards that we created for my next card um, I'm going to create a shaker card and we're going to heat emboss this design onto the acetate on the window of the shaker now, obviously, if you're going to be embossing on acetate, you need some heat resistant acetate. That's what this is. And I've cut this to size to fit a frame and I have die cut a frame um, using some stitched rectangle dies. And I just need to dust over with my anti-static bag because acetate does have a tendency to attract little flyaway bits of embossing powder. Mainly it, it's sort of fingerprints that cause it. And once again, we're taking the large spray design and I'm just going to arrange it like so, bearing in mind that we're gonna have the frame around the edge like that. So, Have that in place. Your acetate will sort of stick to the polymer. It's uh, not a lot you can do about it, but if you've got it lined up in the corner of a stamp platform, you shouldn't have any problems. Going to ink up once again with my clear embossing ink pad.
press down evenly all over and again keeping this scrap of paper in the background I'm going to be using white embossing powder this time so this is the Wow Opaque Bright White. I get through a lot of this, which is why I have the large size pot. So I hope you can just sort of see that there. And carefully heat emboss. So there's our design embossed on that. Let's just clear the embossing powder away. So we need to stick the acetate in behind the window here and I'm just gonna use some glue or double-sided tape to do that. Let me see if I've got some narrow tape. And whichever way you find easiest, whether you want to place that down or I think it's easier to see to lay the frame upside down and apply the acetate got any excess bits of tape just showing around the edge just trim them off with scissors or a knife but that's our window completed so I'm going to get my card blank and get that ready to assemble the shaker and I'll come back and just show you how quickly how to do that well now I'm ready to pretty much assemble my shaker card I've got my card blank here and I've matted a couple of layers of card on there and I want to stamp a sentiment so that it's inside the window. So I just need to decide where to position that. So I want my window to be pretty much centralized on my card blank. And I'm, I think I'm fairly happy with that there. So I'm just going to be using, this is sky blue archival ink. It just coordinates nicely with that backing card. And just pop that away so we don't lose it. Now I've applied a double layer of foam tape to the back of this and I've got some sequins that I want to pop in and possibly some little clear gems. And there we have our shaker card. Again, totally different to the previous cards that we've done. Um, four looks from one stamp set and really impressed with how versatile this particular stamp set is. But you do not need to have this stamp set to do this. These techniques are transferable to many, many other sort of silhouette type stamps. They need to be a solid image. So I'll just clear my stamp press and a few bits and pieces out of the way and have a quick recap of what we've created today. So we began the day with this lovely soft watercolour effect on craft card, lovely rustic card. Next we moved on to this elegant design with the gold embossing over a masked off colour blocked area. 
Then we did our spotlight stamping, highlighting an area of the stamping colour and then leaving the rest of the design in black and white. And we finished with our sparkly shaker card, heat embossed on acetate with our sentiment in behind the window. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, as always, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you again next week with another video. But for now, that's all. Bye.